Okay, so uh, derivative is a process. It can be applied to any function. The result of the derivative process is a new function, so that means we can apply it again. Like we can apply it multiple times, as many times as we want. So we refer to as higher order derivatives. We just repeat the process and apply the derivative to the result of a prior derivative and so on and so on. So um, when we do this, uh, here's a new kind of notation. A couple of different ways we can denote uh, higher order derivatives starting from an initial function and running it through the process multiple times. First derivative, we've seen these before, y prime, f prime, differential notation, dy dx. If I do it twice, then I add primes, right? In prime notation, we add a prime every time we apply a derivative. So the second derivative, y double prime, f double prime. The differential form is a slightly, uh, a slightly varied. Um, we add a power, but we do it differently depending on which part of the uh, differential form we're in. In the numerator, the power comes between the d and the variable. In the denominator, the power is applied to the variable. So or at least that's the way it looks. These aren't literally powers. They're just notations for the expression of multiple derivatives. So d2, d, d2y over dx2, that's the second derivative. Third derivative, three primes, or d3y, dx3. And the more I do this, in particular, as I uh, repeat this process, the primes start to pile up on top of each other. So uh, we have a slightly different variation if we have to do this a lot instead of attaching all these primes. In fact, normally, after the third derivative, we quit using primes and we use this kind of parenthetical notation. We put the number of times the derivative has been taken inside parentheses. So that's just to make it more readable instead of attaching all these prime, mar prime marks. Uh, but the differential form just follows the same pattern, right? No matter how many times we do it, it looks the same. The number now tells us how many times it's been done. Okay, so what's the nth derivative of x to the fourth? Uh, what's the first derivative equal? We've already done that. What's the second derivative equal? 12x squared, right? Uh, and again, just to make it explicit, uh, the 3, the uh, power, in fact, no, I guess it's the other way around, uh, the 4 in front, that was already there, 3x squared from the derivative of x cubed, so 12x squared, the derivative, second derivative. That was third derivative. 24x. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, but there was that uh, 12 already there, so that's 24x. Uh, what's the fourth derivative? 24, all right, the derivative of x itself is just 1. What's the fifth derivative? 0. What's the sixth derivative? 0. And for on and on forever and ever. Y the sixth, y the seventh, and forever and ever now, every other derivative will be 0. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. It's not very difficult. It's polynomial form, positive exponent, a uh, positive integral exponent. For any polynomial form, eventually the derivatives will all go to zero. It usually takes uh, one more time than the power. So I started with the fourth power. By the time I got to the fifth derivative, all derivatives had gone to zero, and they will never change from this point on. Um, I had another example. I forgot to put it on my sheet here, but I'm go ahead and list it anyway. Uh, here's the next one. Um, what's the, uh, the nth derivative of, uh, of the reciprocal? What's the nth derivative of this expression? 1 over x to the fourth. Uh, so, number one, in order to take a derivative of a function like this, what do I have to do? Got to put it in power form. The only rule that we have right now, besides those rules about sums and differences and products, is 
power rule. So how do I rewrite the reciprocal in power form? Minus four. So this is where we start. Now, here we go. What's the first derivative of this function? So the first derivative comes from negative 4 times x to the negative 5. So that's just a straight application of the power rule. The new, the new power, one less than the old power. Uh, second derivative. It's the second derivative of this function. Yeah. Well, and by the way, I, uh, yeah, I should be doing this as we go along. Um, you know, every time uh, we said earlier that we always wanted to return our expressions into the form in which they were presented. We started with fraction form here. I converted to exponential form so I could take derivatives, but I would probably want to return those. Uh, but because we're continuing this process, I'll just leave it like this. Uh, so uh, 20x to the negative 6. Okay. Uh, what's next? negative 120, so I've got the 20 here from the previous two derivatives. Negative 6, x to the negative 7. And it should be pretty clear that this function is fundamentally different from the previous case. Uh, by the time I get to the fourth derivative, now what do I have? fourth derivative of this function going to be? Yep, so the negative 7, that was already here. The negative 120. And one less power. So once again, the coefficients combined, 840, x to the negative 8. And it should be obvious, this will never terminate. No matter how many times I take derivatives, I'm going to get smaller and smaller power to the variable. This will never vanish. This will continue. In fact, these coefficients, their magnitude becomes larger and larger. The powers become smaller and smaller. And this process will never end. Um, now, the question is, can you actually come up with a formula, right, so that if I told you I was taking the nth derivative, you could tell me exactly what it was going to end up being. Now, the power, that's easy. You know, I know exactly what the power of the nth derivative is going to be. What is it going to be? How are the powers behaving? Yeah. Every time I do it, I subtract 1 from the original negative 4 that was already there. Uh, but this coefficient, this is a very tricky thing because, uh, uh, number 1, the coefficient is flipping back and forth between negative and positive. Number two, it's always get a new multiplier every step along the way. Uh, now, this can be done. We can express this using uh, factorials, factorial notation. Um, but I don't think we're going to do that. But at least if I ask you to go to a certain point, you should be able to take this as far as you can go. But it's very different from the previous case. Right? Instead of this starting to disappear, uh, the power is getting smaller now in the negative direction means this continues on indefinitely and every time I take a derivative I'll get a new variable form and the powers get smaller, smaller, smaller all the way to infinity. Okay, so uh, the uh, so anytime I've got a function I can apply the derivative process over and over again. Some cases like polynomial forms the derivative will eventually vanish and go to zero and the whole process comes to a standstill um, but uh, other f function forms this process can be repeated and it will never come to an end no matter how many times I do it. Okay, so um, there's our first introduction to uh, our first, in fact, again, uh, there were three rules that we, four rules that we learned here. Um, the rules about constants, the rules about sums and differences, and the rule about constant multiples. Those will be universal. We'll be using those uh, no matter what sort of function form we have. But the most important rule out of all of this is this one the power rule. This is the one that drives, that allows us to produce new functions from old functions um, in a way that the other three rules can't. Okay.